The head of the Charles is the largest two-day regatta in the world. The race attracts some 300,000 spectators to Boston, and they gather on the shores of the Charles River to watch 11,000 athletes paddle by in almost 2,000 boats. The prestigious race draws teams from all over the country and the world. High schools and club teams are invited to row. Also, the competition includes some of the very best college teams in the country, but no community college has ever been invited to the head of the Charles. Until now, next month, Schenectady County Community College will row in the head of the Charles. And to talk about it, the head coach of Schenectady County Community College, Cody Rule, is here. First of all, congratulations. This Thank is really much. exciting. It is. It's fantastic. And the college is excited. The athletes are excited. I'm excited. And um, we're very eager to get out there and show them what we got. What did you have to do and your student athletes have to do to put yourselves in position to be the first ever community college to, to have this uh, honor and opportunity? Well, what's most important is to compete at as many U.S. rowing registered races as we possibly can. And um, we've really diversified over the last couple seasons and where we've been going and the levels of competition that we've been rowing at. Um, once we were entered in the lottery, I knew we had a chance and uh, we found out uh, two weeks ago. And once we found out, you know, the college has basically been all on board with it and doing our best efforts to make sure that we go and, and compete mm -hmm. strong and as hard as possible. What did it mean to you when, when you got that call or the email and, and you knew <laughs> Actually, it was official? It's a, it's a funny story. One of the rowers, uh, we were, I was just out at a social function, and one of the rowers sent me a text message with a screenshot on her phone of the <laughs> registration. And she was like, oh, we got in. And, yeah. I, you know, it was really, it was validating because, you know, there are so many schools at that race. And just to be even counted in those ranks, it just means so much, not only on the personal level for me as a coach, but I know how much it means sure. to the athletes. And that's, it's a special feeling. And what do you hope to accomplish when you go there? Because you're going to be seeing clubs, programs, colleges from around the country, around the world that are the very best at what they do. Right. So we're just looking to make noise. We want to compete as hard as we can. Of course, we want to win the race, but the competition is steep. Yeah. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you're out there representing your college as best you can, representing your friends back at home, or your teammates that aren't racing as best as you can. And we want to we want to see where we stack up against those uh, the, the leaders of the pack. We want to see where we stack up against uh, the other clubs that are similar to us. Maybe we'll even finish around some you know teams from larger schools, um, you know Division One style programs that have boats in our races. Um, you know I'd like to be right in the competition, right in the thick of things. You know within. Uh, striking distance yep. of you know of some of the leaders. The head of the Charles in Boston. We know what it means to you. What does it mean to some of your rowers? Well, let's find out. I was so completely excited. We work hard every day, 6:30 in the morning, and just to get my um, hard work recognized and my dedication recognized to be chosen to go row in Boston um, was very special to me. Does it mean more because you are part of school history, the first community college to do this? Um, yeah, I think so, and definitely a big win for our little college. It's a course that Olympians have rowed on, so it'll be interesting to see what they've seen. I really think our dedication, hard work that we put in every day, with each stroke, um, we get better and better, and we're really going to come for the title there. We were picked because, well, I like to think it's our dedication, both at the boathouse and our high GPAs at the school, so hard work is really paying off. The regatta is October 17th. We know you're excited. We know your student athletes are excited. How do you recruit high caliber rowers to your club, knowing that you know you want to try and build this thing the best you can, but it is just a club team where maybe right. they might have opportunities to, to row elsewhere? What we find is that the athletes that are drawn to the sport of rowing are they're smart and they're well educated. And fortunately and unfortunately at times, they're often picked up by larger schools and things like that. However, there's a wealth of talent in the area. Places like Niskayuna, Shenandoah, Burnt Hills, uh, Saratoga, they're, they're all strong, really deep programs and they have a lot of athletes. And I just make sure that they know that we're there because our results and the races that we're going to, they speak for themselves and they match up with other colleges locally. And that's what I really try to focus on is, you know, yeah, the other schools are great and I encourage you to check them out and see what they have to offer you. Mm -hmm. But if you come to SEC, you can really key in on getting those classes done, get your general education courses done, all while furthering yourself as an athlete and still attending these large races. And they seem to respond very well to that, and they seem to be drawn to the, to the team. Is it possible to go into a classroom and find an athlete who's maybe never rode before and turn them into a high caliber member of a crew team? Well, the beauty of it is, and the stat I give all the time, is that in 2012, the London Olympics, uh, our women, our US women won mm -hmm. gold, and the majority of that boat did not know how to row before college. Hmm. So a lot of times when I get an athlete in, I'll say, go to class, find some 
somebody that's tall. Find somebody yeah. that looks strong. Find someone that you think would fit on the team. Yeah. And tell them to come out. And it just takes, it, you know, there's a, there's a feeling that you get in the boat when all the oars are clicking together and everyone's catching water at the same time and you're really feeling and you almost feel weightless. If, if a rower feels that, yeah. they're... That's it. They're, they're hooked. In. They're in. So if I can get them to feel that, I know that, that that they'll stick. And and you're starting to see great results, not just with your team, but with former athletes on your team now moving on to a higher level. Right. We've sent athletes to all levels of collegiate competition, all the way from other club schools to Division One, II, Two, and Three. Um, in fact, we just found out uh, recently that one of our, our team captain last year, her name was Taylor, um, she was recruited to row at University of Buffalo, and she's now made their varsity squad. Wow. So, you know, to send a rower from such a small school and go to Division One, Division One, yeah. You know, that's, that's about as high as, as we want to aim for, and that's fantastic. Such a commitment, too. I know you typically practice at what time in the morning? Uh, 6.30. <laughs> right and early. <laughs> Why there are so many uh, drawing points to crew? That's probably got to be the it's, hurdle that's I always, I always sneak that information in last. Like, it's so much fun. We have a great time. Yeah. It's at 6.30. Right. And uh, what was that? Oh, nothing. It's fine. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah, just come right, out. Right. <laughs> but they, they get up early and yeah. they, they enjoy it because they just, it, it seems like so much fun. They really do. And we have, we have uh, a great, great body of water to row on on the Mohawk. The facilities that we row out of are fantastic, um, you know, and there's a certain level of camaraderie. Everyone gets up together. Everyone's tired. And it, it actually sort of bonds them together a little bit more, I think. You mentioned uh, earlier we were talking about the type of student athletes that you have and, and putting the student, you know, very much where it belongs yes. first. And, and you've got some really smart uh, women on your yeah, team. Yeah, every year perennially I always end up with a few athletes that are on the president's list, which is, mm -hmm. you know, above a 3.8 GPA and mm -hmm. the dean's list, you know, as well, which is above, I believe, it's a 3.4 at Schenectady County. So um, every year we get those girls that are on there. And what's even more impressive is that they're smart enough to ask for help when they need it. And the mm -hmm. college has all these programs in place for them, free tutoring and language labs and all mm -hmm. these things that you find at larger universities. Mm -hmm. It's all set up for them. So a lot of these young women, they're just that, they're young. And it's hard to ask for help sometimes. But mm -hmm. when they struggle, they ask for help. And when they succeed, yeah. they share it amongst themselves, which is fantastic. You row in the Mohawk and uh, you row out of the Union College Boathouse, is that right? Yeah, Union has been fantastic for us. Mm -hmm. um, their whole athletic department and their head coach, uh, Tom White, have really fostered a good environment for us. Um, we use their facilities, we rot of their boathouse, um, and they make sure that our needs are attended to, they provide us uh, transportation to races and those kind of things, and uh, we have a very healthy rivalry with them almost, and you know, we cheer for them, they cheer for us, and we root for them to succeed just as hard as they do with us, and it's been a great relationship. It's one of those sports where if you watch, even at the very highest level, you watch the Olympics, and, and you see the athletes doing it, they make it look easy. Definitely. It's not easy. Not easy at all. <laughs> and I suspected that it wasn't, but right. I confirmed those suspicions when I hopped into a boat with the Schenectady County Community College crew team earlier today. At the Union College Boathouse, where the Schenectady County Community College rows out of, I'm here to learn how to be a member of the crew team. And to teach me, we've got Kayla, Julie, and Dakota. We're here right on the banks of the Mohawk River, and I'm expecting to get into a boat. This is not a boat. That's going to sink. What are you doing to me? This is a ERC which is the land version of what you would be doing out in the boat. Okay. So show me how it works. Elbows out 90 degrees. So you want to kind of like chicken land? Uh-huh. <laughs> Got it. Right. And now what? Relax your shoulders. Relax. Okay. Yeah. And there's nothing about me that's relaxed right now, but okay. <laughs> legs, body, arm going back, and then arms, body, legs. Oh, I gotcha. You should probably know not to lean over too far. <laughs> Don't put your oar too deep in the water. I should probably offer to help. Wait it looks up. heavy. Sure, I think I got it. Focus on your hand levels as well. It'll keep the boat more steady, less apt to flip. So it could possibly flip. Most, uh, it's a possibility. But... First problem, <laughs> not built for size 13 feet. We're gonna squeeze them in there. Yeah, I'm trying All to right, wait up, wait up, wait up. Hey guys! Hey, Kelsey got a crab! Yay! Crab! <laughs> <laughs> it just happened! <laughs> okay, so you caught in the wrong world what we call a crab. You must keep that oar uh -huh. completely flat on the water. What okay. happened is you let it turn backwards. Yeah. And the boat just took it right away from it. Wow! You're that's... a big, tall, strong guy. It's easy to let that happen. I'm not stronger than this river. No, I'm not! Keep that blade square, Kelly. Straight up and down. There you go. Good. Oh, I didn't see that buoy there. Where did that buoy come from? Good, keep it going. I'm trying to get my paddle or the oar in the exact right spot every time. It's either skipping across the water or it's too high. 
Yeah, that's what we gotta develop muscle memory. Here we go, nice and even pressure. Those arms out, Kelly, don't get to that catch too early. Take your time with the legs. All right, Dakota, there's your crew. Keep them moving. Don't go through the bridge. Aim for lane two. Hey, Morgan, why don't you help out a little bit? <laughs> so I'm relatively dry other than my feet, which means we didn't fall in. And for that, I have my crew to thank. Uh, ladies, at any point, did you think we might be getting in the water? No, not at all. You did excellent. You kept up with us well. You had really even strokes the entire time, and that's great, especially for someone being so new. Wow, the fact that she can lie that well and make it look <laughs> convincing, very, very impressive. That you were watching from the boat, not in our boat, what you think? I mean, there was that one point where you caught a crab. That was, yeah. <laughs> it was a tough moment for you. <laughs> but you recovered from it. It was pretty good. Now, uh, Dakota, um, as the coxswain, uh, what were your impressions? Um, other than being able to keep even pressure, which is where you make sure that you row at the same pressure that everybody else is in the boat, mm -hmm. it went really well. Rating stayed pretty true, and it seemed to be a pretty good row. Nothing that crazy. You got a little wet though, didn't you? Just a little bit, yeah. And it was my fault? <laughs> um, it was a little bit you, a little bit Natalie. It, it was out there. <laughs> it was out there. <laughs> so that's, it's, it's a team, is that it? Yeah, you're definitely a team with the person in front of you. I know um, Julie's usually my, my partner there, and we work really well together, but you and I didn't do too bad. <laughs> well, I appreciate you saying that, but you happen to have to do with that, right? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan, what did you think? It was a good row. We actually stayed pretty set the whole time, which is not normal for new people rowing, so wow. that was amazing. And we got the groove on for a while there, so we did really well. There you go. We got our groove on. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, ladies. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Didn't fall in. I think you were rooting for it. I know Jason, who was shooting that piece, <laughs> we was rooting for it. We had our fingers crossed to go swimming. <laughs> of course, if I went in, the women were going in too. Ah, they would have been fine. <laughs> it's a little colder now than it might have been a couple months ago. That is ago. true. That is true. And, and the one thing for me that we've already talked about a little bit is, yeah, I've been kayaking and I've been in a canoe, but when you're going at that speed, right. the coordination where if you miss by just a little bit, if I get that row a little bit deeper or a little bit deeper than I should, all of a sudden the boat <laughs> starts yeah. to shimmy and it gets scary. It doesn't take much to offset those boats. They're very mm -hmm. long, they're very narrow, and there's only the small skeg or fin, which is sometimes a f only a foot or less, uh, keeping you straight and upright. Yeah. So, you know, I always tell the girls, it's a simple lever. It's a lever system. A little bit of movement in the boat correlates to a huge movement outside the boat, and we yeah. have to take things slow and steady the entire way. And the boats are expensive, too, which I didn't realize until one of the girls said, you know, we're trusting you with about a $30,000 <laughs> piece of equipment Yeah, here. they are expensive. The oars, are, the oars are expensive. The boats are expensive. It's something that the community college level is, is challenging because our, our budget is small and, you know, it, it doesn't always reflect new equipment. However, it really drills home the point of go slow, be safe. We'll add speed in later. <laughs> Don't break anything. Please right. and thank you. Right. Um, what do you do to try and get those times down and get that speed up. As the coach, obviously, you've got them out there working hard. I'm sure there's strength conditioning and, and cardio and that sort of thing. But really, as the coach, how can you harness the most out of your athletes? So we, we do have a partnership with the YMCA in, um, on, in downtown Schenectady on mm -hmm. State Street, which is fantastic because we do most of our strength and conditioning there. We keep our cardio levels mm -hmm. up. However, being a community college, I have to condense that learning down to a much smaller amount of time. I have to get the most results I can out of them in such a short period of time. So I focus on technique. I make sure that the crew can stay together, that they row, can row in control, and mm -hmm. then they can row as a unit. I'm not so much worried about power application because I can mm -hmm. get you to do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard for me to get you to row as a unit. And if I can get four or eight women rowing together as one whole boat, the rest is the easy part. You know, and that's right. what I really focus on, is getting them together and to row with as much technique as they possibly can. Maybe after a few more passes out on the river, we can you know, get your technique up to that level <laughs> yeah. as well, but we're not, we're might, not rushing that It yet. might take more than a few. We'll see about it. <laughs> Cody Rule, he is the head coach of the Schenectady County Community College crew team. The women are rowing at the head of the Charles, a very prestigious event in less than a month. We'll be uh, cheering for you. Best of luck, and thanks for coming on. Cool. Thanks so much, Kelly. All right. Thank you, Appreciate Cody. It. And coming up, the most strange, peculiar, awesome college football play of the weekend. We have that for you next on The Edge.